Welcome to episode number 303 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday the 9th of July. 2013. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Hillary Rumble. Got a lot coming up in the newsroom, so you can look forward to this. Are you an Ubisoft user? Change your password, because they've been hacked. Ooh. Ooh. Samsung is buying set-top box maker Boxy. Hmm. In-game purchases are coming soon to World of Warcraft. A new form of advertising is vibrating the ad into your head. Freaky. And lastly, that cool robot from Honda, Asimo, is having trouble understanding human gestures. So stick around because these stories are coming up later in the show. Hey, robot, I'm over here. (laughs) Hey, we've got some stuff to give away tonight. We've got the newer tech 7 port USB 2.0 hub. What is exciting about this thing? It is two, it's got a 2.1 amp powered output. Ooh. The whole thing is like four amps. It's a powered cool. USB hub, so you're not going to be drawing any power from your computer. Make sure you get into the chat room. Mm-hmm. Okay, Category 5 on Freenode. Uh, in a couple of moments' time, we're going to be giving that away. Drawbot is going to be going into the chat room. Here's why it's important for you to sign on, because it's going to be getting all the names from the chat room and oh. conducting the draw. That's your ballot. Be in the chat room. I like hmm. it a lot. On tonight's show, I'm not going to give away too much. I was thinking, how much should I give away? (laughs) On tonight's show, we're actually going to be showing you uh, something a little bit interesting, a little bit nostalgic for me. We're going to be looking at a distribution of Linux from the early days. We're going to be going back in time and seeing what distribution of Linux actually helped me to make the switch from Microsoft Windows over to Linux. Hmm. And we're going to be looking at it on original hardware. What does that even mean? No virtual machines here. We're talking the real deal. Antiquated. I know. So stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, of course, if you've got friends that you're trying to convert over to Linux, tonight's your night to to kind of chat with us, and and we're just going to bounce around some ideas, what you need to know uh, for those particular users. Cool. And if you have questions, as always, you can give us a little ringling on our telly. You can call call on the phone. We can hear your voice. We're used to seeing <laughs> seeing your voice through typing, but we can hear your voice. So mm-hmm. give us a ringling, two five four five cat five TV. That's the phone number. Yeah. So. Okay. What? Else? Yeah. Well, that's. Um, we'll chat with Agamotto in just a moment. He's got a couple questions for us about oh. the flooding up here in Canada. Uh, it's Ooh, been kind of yeah. a crazy kind of month. Uh, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Don't forget, get into the chat room. We're giving one of these away. Stick around. This is Category 5 Technology TV. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here here and here, but with one exception. You should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble, hanging out. Thanks for joining us tonight, folks. Don't forget, get into the chat room, because Drawbot is going to be there in just a couple of moments. I don't know how much clearer I can be. We're going to be giving away a 7-port USB 2.0 powered hub. It's the dream powered hub, the best one you're ever going to find. And we're giving that away in a couple of minutes. We're going to send it anywhere in the world. Anywhere. Because we are a worldwide show due to the beauty of the internet. This is true. This is true. (laughs) I wanted to say happy birthday to Krista Wells tomorrow. This is like birthday month for the show. You've got a birthday coming up. Yes, I do. Yours is 19th? Yeah, good memory. Well, because I'm the 17th. Very close. Becca's the 20th. It's like this is definitely birthday month. Mm-hmm. I think we've got a couple other ones on the calendar as well. But tomorrow is Krista Wells' birthday, uh, so happy birthday to her. You recently had your iPod stolen. Oh, it's still a fresh wound. Yeah. Let me tell you. So what's going on? Are you? 
I have you bought anyone? I haven't moved forward. I'm okay. still in the mourning phase, I think. <laughs> It's tough, eh? I mean, because you've got your entire music library on this little device. I know. And, you know, whatever it is, whatever model of iPod, it's like your whole library's there. And if you didn't think to sync it, Which you lose it all. So the community and, and we here at the show, we've come together and just gotten you a couple Aww. of uh, things. So a couple thank of donations you. have come in. Uh, that and is so thank you also very to Heather. Kind. So Heather we, we haven't seen you in so long. It's amazing. But no. finally get to give that to you. So that, well, that's just to go you toward your, your iPod. Thank so. you, world. That's so kind. And if, if you want to send something to Hillary's attention, just go to cat5.tv slash C. And just in the notes, uh, in the comments there, just mention that it's for Hillary's iPod. Aww. And we'll get her a, a like Thank an iTunes guys. card or something just to, <laughs> just to help her that's get. That's very, very sweet. Because it's not really the iPod that is painful. It's the library. It's right? the if you, music. If you lose all that Ooh. music and you don't have it in your iTunes account. So. Well, thank you, everyone. Very, very, very generous and kind. Dave Maydew says, <laughs> who would steal an iPod? And I think we've been through this before. Pretty much any teenager. Punk teenagers. Punk teenagers. Break into your car. It's always them. It's probably senior citizens, actually, Dave. Well, That's my guess. Be. They're really good at computers. <laughs> my grandparents are. Yeah. So Agamotto asking about the flooding up here. It, it has been uh, quite the year in Ontario and in, in Canada in, Canada in general. Canada, yeah. Uh, Toronto got hit last night just yesterday afternoon I was at work and and you know the warnings come in and and mm-hmm. uh, I think they were pretty well prepared for it and that you know the subway was shut down I don't think that anybody got stranded in subway tunnels or anything that I know of but there was like a go train that got yeah. stuck in you know several feet of water and they took hours upon hours to get everybody out of the train and so that's a little bit, you know, scary, but uh, didn't actually get to us up here in Barrie, which no. is surprising because we're only, you know, a 40, 45 minute drive away. Um, so we've been really fortunate that way. But uh, we're certainly thinking about everybody who is affected by the flooding and uh, businesses. I mean, I can't mm-hmm. imagine, um, you know, you go into work and it's like your, your business is destroyed and it's like, sure, we can rebuild. But, uh, you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, somebody that I that I know through somebody else uh, had just built a brand new cottage, and Aww. of course, in come the floodwaters, and it's like they just finished this cottage, and it's just unbelievable. Mm. So, so it's been a scary year for sure for a lot of people. We are heading up to Halliburton County uh, as we always do every year, mm. and and uh, you know the the flooding was really really bad there. It's receded now, but uh, you know it's it's just wild to think of. Yes. Last year when we went, it was drought conditions. <laughs> We weren't allowed to have a campfire. Uh, it's so crazy. <laughs> what can you do? Oh, uh, Hillary mentioned it, but make sure you pick up the phone if you want to give us a call. Ask you, ask us your question, 2545-CAT5TV. If it's long distance for you and you're in Canada or the United States and you can't make that for long distance reasons, pop us a, a private message uh, in the chat room with your telephone number, including the area code, and we'll give you a call. We'll call you. We will call you. <laughs> okay, well... We give away this thing. Yeah, I love prizes. I know. I'm looking at all the people right now in the chat room. Yeah. Okay. One of them. And I want to say greetings to everybody. Yeah, loads of people in the chat room. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm going to bring up Drawbot. Drawbot is an amazing piece of software that goes into the chat room, grabs everybody's names, as well as those who have casted their ballots through email over the past week, and sends everything to us. So Drawbot is going into the chat room now. Oh. And we're drawing for a USB 2.0 seven port hub from newer mm-hmm. technology, newer, uh, it's newertech.com. Make sure you check out their website. Here we go. Ooh, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Well, going through everybody's names. Yeah. Cycling through. So what's exciting about this is that this is a four amp powered hub. So that means if you plug in a scanner, it's not drawing any power from your computer. If you plug in any device, it's not going to draw the power from your computer. It's going to get it from this. But it also has a 2.1 amp powered, dedicated power port. And what that means is that uh, you're able to power something like a charger, your your phone charger or your iPad charger, and it will do a super job charging because it's 2.1 amps, unlike your computer, which might be 1 amp. So it gives you a lot more power all at once. Going through the names in the chat room and those who have submitted their entries through the... Uh, the email. Nice to see so many familiar and new faces uh, in the chat room today. And we are really representing the, the whole world tonight. That's how we roll. 
worldwide. Starting to speed up here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The anticipation is killing me. I know. You never know who, how many people are going to be in the chat room. <laughs> it's coming through. NewerTech.com. It's compatible with USB 3, 2, and 1.1 devices. Uh, of course, it's uh, daisy chainable, so you can hook up up to 127 full speed devices to one single port on your computer. Holy. Data transfer rates are, you know, excellent. Uh, and it, of course, is fully powered. You can actually do this, you can plug this in without even plugging it into your computer and charge all your devices. It can be used just as a USB charger because a lot of devices these days are USB. Mm -hmm. Hokey doodle! Just say hi to uh, those who are new registered viewers and I see some of your names flying by on the screen tonight. Uh, we have Want to go through this one at a time? I'll say Rock 88 Hard. Uh, that's one of our new registrations on the website. Polly Magri. Polly Magre. Polly Welcome Magre. To the show. <laughs> uh, Carter Slad is also joining us uh, as a new viewer here at Category 5 TV. And so is Wymac. Thanks for joining. SWL Brazil. Nice to have you here. V Blars. You rock. Thanks for coming. Planet H. Nice to see you. I read that as Planeth. It might be Planeth. <laughs> but I think Planet H makes more sense. <laughs> also like to welcome Linux Grandma. Hey, Linux Grandma. How cool. Kitsune Smiley Face, also a new viewer. And so is Rottenbo. Steve, or Ronbo. Yeah, Ron, Ronbo could be. <laughs> Stephen C. Nice to have you here. And M. Castillo, we welcome you too. And finally, uh, our latest registration on our website is Nicolinio. Nicolinio. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Okay, now we're really whoa, getting whoa, somewhere whoa, here. Oh, speedy. Whoo Good luck, everybody. Here we go. And the winner of the port, the hub is Kitsune Smiley Face. Woohoo! Congratulations. Congratulations. So you are the winner of this device. It is a 7-port USB 2.0 hub with the powered 2.1 amp port on the back as well. Uh, Hillary and I were talking just before the show, well, what can you do with this? Well, you've got a laptop and mm -hmm. uh, you've only got one, two, or three USB ports. You plug this in and all of a sudden, seven ports. So much from easier one. to have like yeah. your computer mouse and then like I've got like a card reader and then sometimes I'm charging my phone and then, yeah. you know. Well, you know what else is that if you plug in let's say your mouse and your keyboard to your laptop computer mm -hmm. and it is on battery, you're actually draining the battery faster. True. This, because you plug it into the wall, it's got its own separate power. It's not going to drain any power from mm -hmm. your computer. Fantastic. That is cool. Kitsune Smiley Face, all you have to do is send us an email live at category5.tv with your real name as well as uh, your, your full mailing address just so that we can ship that to you anywhere in the world. Congratulations, Yay. and thanks for everybody uh, participating in the draw tonight as well. Mm -hmm. And like I say, great to see so many uh, familiar as well as new faces in the chat room. Nice to have you joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Always a hoot and a holler. <laughs> we are. Category 5 Technology TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here as well. Uh, we are a member of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Mm hmm We'll just blast you with that, and then we're going to pull up... Uh, well, usually we look at new devices here on the show. Usually. Brilliant new stuff. Oh, before I move on, oh. I want to say thank you very much to Kekekek. Kekekek Kek. Kek, Kek actually <laughs> sent us, as I look down here, sent us a couple of microphones. Uh, we, had a, we did a radio show recently. We were actually part of a, mm -hmm. a, an audio podcast, um, and uh, I'll certainly post the links uh, in the show notes for episode number... 303. Uh, but one of the problems that we had is we were short on microphones. So at the very last minute, I'm emailing Eric Kidd, who's a, a professional musician, and yeah. you know, please, can you bring some microphones? Uh, and Keke Kek st stood up, uh, stepped up, and said, "I've got a couple mics. Don't nice. really use them, and would be happy to send them to you." So you know, these Aww. kind of things. You know, sometimes that uh, that kind of stuff comes in, and you don't you don't realize how you can support the show. But now we don't have that problem where if we want to do terrific. another radio broadcast. 
uh, we can do that and oh, it's a lot set. easier. Well, Thank because we you. generally, we only have these two headset microphones, well, yeah. right? So uh, if we're going to sit around in a kind of a, you know, a, a, what do you call it? A round table kind of environment. Mm. It was, it was kind of makeshift. <laughs> hey, thank so, you for that. that. That's very, so very kind. Much. Okay. So I was digging through the old gear over the past couple of days, mm -hmm. just getting cleaned up. We're working on uh, moving the studio. Uh, studio D is hopefully coming in the fall. Your donations are going to help us get there as well as clicking on banners and things like that. Um, we are hoping to renovate a new space for the studio because this, I don't know if you remember, if you've been watching the show long enough and, and saw us move mm -hmm. into Studio C where we are now, this is a temporary space. This is, uh, this is basically the, the rec room of our house and yeah. we hope to eventually turn it into a rec room. Um, so with all that said, uh, we had plans from the very, very beginning when my wife and I bought this house that uh, we were going to move the studio into its own space and that's moving forward. So with all that means unpacking old stuff and going through mm -hmm. and sorting yeah. and figuring all, you know, where do we put everything and getting rid of a lot of old e-waste and things like that. Interestingly enough, I was going through the junk and I found an old laptop from 1999. Ooh. 1999. That's when I loved the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> it is. Wow. It was a long time ago, wasn't it? Um, and uh, with this, I, so I fired it up. They don't make them like they used to, do they, folks? Um, mm -mm. And, and it fired up. And I want to show you what's on there. But first, I'm going to show you this. This is amazing. And it, it's feel, this. feel this. It's like a It's like a weight. Lifting you got that? course. I can barely hold This it. is really heavy, folks. Uh, Look at the thickness of that. Compare that chunky. to like your your tablet. I mean, th this is more powerful. It's ridiculous, isn't <laughs> really? it? Really? If you think about really? it like that. This has got way more power than Weird. this. Isn't that so bizarre? It's got uh, this is this is nostalgic. It's got a, a three and a half inch floppy drive. In case you want to throw some floppies on there, it has a dial-up modem. I don't even know if it's a. F it's probably it'd be a 56k, probably a V92 or something like that. So to be you know the the better end of what they had at the time. But you notice, no network port. There's no Wi-Fi. No ability to get on the internet out of the box <laughs> unless you use dial-up. Weird, eh? So if you want to use dial-up, oh my goodness, that's heavy. There are some PCMCIA slots, so you can put in a. Uh, you know, like a, a Ethernet card or mm -hmm. something if you wanted to buy one separately. They were really expensive back then, though. I'm looking. I, I don't even see a single USB port. USB. Oh, there. What? One USB port. So this is where I really need a USB yes, hub. Yes, for sure. It has a single USB 1.1 port. Not a lot you can do with that. Okay. So I want to open this up for you. Because mm -hmm. what I found on the screen took me way back. Let's turn this around so you can see. <laughs> Even the power cable is, that is so funny. huge. There we go. What? This actually has on it, and uh, observe the fantastic keyboard and mouse, <laughs> Linspire 5, which would have been, you know, a later release of Linspire. So this laptop or, uh, originally, you know, a $3,500 laptop. Oh, my goodness. With the $500 CD-ROM upgrade. Can you imagine? Holy. It has the $500 CD-ROM upgrade, so a $4,000 laptop. Still runs in 2013, but who wants it? Mm, don't want to lug that around with me. So, yeah, um, when I was, well, in 1999, I started tinkering with Linux. I had Caldera, Open Linux, I had Red Hat, and I wanted to, I wanted to get away from Microsoft Windows, personally, because I didn't like being tied into the Microsoft business model. This, as I say, is Linspire. And you'll see that out of the box, you know, it has stuff like, why Linux? <laughs> and it's a crudely animated kind of slideshow. Run by today's largest companies, Linux is the fastest growing server operating system in the world because it is incredibly stable, affordable, and secure. Yet all of those wonderful features make it great for your desktop or laptop too. So remember that Linux at that time was not really on the desktop like it is today. Hmm. It's hard to manipulate from this angle. <laughs> this is the Linspire desktop. And you see that it, it 
looks almost as modern, as current as anything that is out there right now. It's KDE. Not sure if it responds to hotkeys even back then. But what was... Cool. I got process table coming up. Apparently the Windows key hotkey brings up the processes. <laughs> okay. What was interesting about this at the time is that it really felt like a Windows uh, 98 mm -hmm. style interface, right? Because that's what everybody was running at the time, Windows 98 SE. And so I was looking for something that was familiar enough that I could make that transition onto uh, a non-Windows operating system, but it could mm -hmm. be, it would be Linux. Lindos came along in 2001. Um, so this laptop was a couple of years old at that point. Lindos was a, kind of a project by Michael Robertson. You'll remember he's the guy who founded mp3.com. Mm. And Michael Robinson has... Michael Robertson. Robinson? Robertson. Robertson, Robertson I think. Wikipedia can, for me. I can search for you if you want. Thanks. Fact checker. Robertson. Michael Robertson. Chat room will help me out. Because uh, this is all from memory. But... Um, he, he founded mp3.com, and, and as you know, if you used mp3.com at the time, uh, I was, a, a, you know, a band, and so, you know, the, the fact that he dropped us and sold out to another company and, and the service completely dropped all of its users uh, was kind of offensive, and he did the same thing with, with um, Lindos, kind of dropped it and sold out to Xandros or something like that, and so just it became a dead project. But it was alive just long enough to get me and a bunch of other users into Linux. And this Linux was, you know, some people hated it because it tried to be a Windows alternative. It tried to be the Windows kind of mm -hmm. interface. And Linux users didn't like that at the time, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But for somebody coming from Windows, this was brilliant. Helpful in transitioning. It really, really helped people to come over. Thank uh, you, to Michael the, to Robertson. Linux. Yes, Robertson. I knew it. You got it. You'd think I would remember that. It's all good. Yeah. So everything was kind of, like I say, laid out very much like Windows 98. The, uh, the menu system was, you know, pretty well laid out. And what was great about um, Lindos, Linspire, Linspire, they had to change their name in 2002, I think, because Microsoft sued them and said Lindos was uh, <laughs> infringing on their <laughs> copyrights and blah, blah, blah. So that's why the name has changed. So if I say Lindos and Linspire they're interchangeable. It started out as Lindos. Uh, Click and Run was a project that they had brought out as part of the Lindos operating system. It was very much like Synaptic Package Manager or probably a hybrid between Synaptic Package Manager and what we now know as Ubuntu Software Center. Mm. Um, it was very graphical and what was neat about Click and Run is that everything was single click installation. So it was really, really easy to find software and install it and Lindos was one of the first real user-friendly ones to offer an ability to install any program that you wanted without needing a CD, without having to put media. You know, we, back then we had to have 15 yeah. floppy disks, <laughs> and you'd put in the first one, and if one of them in the set was broken, you'd be messed because it wouldn't oh. install. So Click and Run brought us all that, which was really, really cool at the time, and it's a dead project as well. Now, uh, it came with OpenOffice 1.1. There it is. You can see that this old computer kind of chugs along. Uh, but so it had everything that we needed because, you know, what was the one thing that would keep people from uh, running Linux was the software. Mostly, you know, office software, things like that. Um, so having OpenOffice on there gave us the ability to open Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, and really, you know, helped with that transition because it kept you compatible with all of uh, your Windows using friends as well as your, all your old documents you'd already created. Cool. So this was very, very cool as well. And one of the, you know, again, one of the earlier desktops to include all this. So remember that this is, you know, we're going back to 2002, 2003. You know, this version that I'm running right here would have been released in about 2005. So, you know, I followed the up, update path to get the latest version. Um, and then they died shortly after that. So... Huh. I think what was intriguing about Lindos, Linspire, and that era of Linux is that it, it really allowed you to transition to yeah. Linux in a desktop way because up until then, it really felt like Linux was a really scary thing. It was terminal, all about terminal. It was all about are you root or not, and that was a gray area with Lindos. 
and uh, this gave us a chance to switch over. So for me, I made that switch. Uh, Lindos allowed me to make that switch permanently and 100%. Um, I was able to drop Windows completely. And then later through virtualization and things, then I started being able to, to do some other stuff as well. So all very, very cool. Did anyone else use Lindos, Linspire? I'd love to hear from you. Um, it wasn't as popular of a distro as, as some, but what happened is is that Ubuntu came out, right? Mm-hmm. And then this is where Lindos kind of started to die because they were based on Debian, and then they said, oh, well, Ubuntu is out. Ubuntu's doing great with Warty. Let's base... Linspire on Ubuntu. But Lindos, Linspire was a paid for distribution. You had to buy it. Oh, interesting. So, Hmm. again, kind of ticked off a lot of people in the community because it's all free software just rebranded. They did a lot of rebranding. But they, they, you got to give it to them. They made it really, really easy for a a Linux or for a Windows user to switch over to Linux. Even simple things. Can I show you? I'm going to right-click on the desktop. I'm just going to minimize everything here. So there's the desktop. Mm-hmm. Simple little things. Remember, this is really, really, really old. And I hope you can see that a little bit. Right-click, and I'm going to go Configure Desktop. And remember that Linux was really, really hard to configure, hard to work on at that time. And here you've got something that's very much like you would expect in a Windows system kind of like a control panel provided in KDE and really made it simple. Everything has been worded in such a way that it's easy to follow and it was really, really easy to use. Cool. I know it was an easy transition because I went through it and I also brought a lot of people with me. You were converted. I bought up a whole bunch of Lindos discs at the time and I wish I still had some. I know (laughs) that I do somewhere uh, but bought them in the boxes and Mm -hmm. they were fully retail packaged and everything and and started distributing them to my clients and some of the clients actually switched because it was great. No more viruses and all the benefits of Linux started to show themselves on the desktop. So then Ubuntu kept on growing and growing and growing because they had a different business model. Rather than making their money from sales, they're making it from support. Yeah. Brilliant. Interesting. Interesting. So. development over the years, eh? What converted you to Linux? Or are you still trying to convert yourself or somebody else to Linux? Love to know. Send us an email and we'd uh, love to bring it up on the show. For me, though, as a, you know, coming f- from being a Windows user, I think that the most important thing to remember is that we've all been there and, and it's it's not really a... I, I don't try to sell Hillary on switching to Linux by forcefully doing that right Force. yeah but i'll show you what it does and yeah. you, you said before oh look there's flames yeah that's cool that was maybe cool. the flames will help you switch <laughs> but when you realize the freedom that you get when you switch to linux that's a big thing when you realize that there are so many people in a community kind of like category five is a community it's a little bit different than just watching a tv show mm-hmm. when there's a community involved everybody kind of works together and makes it better and better and then you can participate in these kinds of forums and things and and you really feel like you're a part of something as opposed to just installing software on your computer and the freedom is fantastic so and the cost savings do i need to mention that if your if your currency is currency that alone Mm. should drive your (laughs) switcheroo (laughs) shouldn't it so we look forward to your emails live at category5.tv that's my linux conversion story in a nutshell interesting that was really a cool find for me. That is pretty funny, actually. It Br- brought me back. I haven't thought about floppy disks in a long time. <sighs> Not even on my radar. Well, why would they be, really? Yeah. <laughs> but now I have a floppy drive reader. We've so got to I, find a floppy all disk floppies, and just yeah, test it that out. That I threw in the dump because <laughs> I didn't have any way to read them. Fantastic. That's pretty funny, actually. All right. Well, world, <laughs> are you ready for some news? Some new and exciting things? Here are the top stories from the newsroom. Ubisoft has suffered a security breach and is warning account holders that details have been compromised. Oh dear. The video game publisher said that usernames, email addresses, and encrypted passwords had been illegally accessed. But Hmm. that subscribers' debit and credit card details remain safe as it did not store them. That's good to know. 
they said that 58 million people were in its database at the time of the attack. And they are recommending that all Ubisoft's users change their passwords immediately. Hmm. So if somebody was able to get their email addresses and their encrypted passwords and everything. Now, encrypted means that it is obfuscated in a, uh, using a, an algorithm, say MD5 mm -hmm. or something. Can't really be reversed, but if you use a plain English password, or if they have the time to brute force it, they can figure it out. And then they reverse it. Once they've figured out what your password is, the first thing they'll do is test, okay, well, if this is a Hotmail email account, I'm going to log into Hotmail. I'm going to put in their email address and try that password that they're using on Ubisoft. Yeah. Is it the same one? It's oh, and then I'm going to try it on PayPal. And I'm going to try it everywhere else. So it's very important to yeah, change that password. That's scary Yikes. stuff. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Samsung is buying Boxy from, or Boxy, the Israel. I'm sorry, what? They're We're buying the what from the what now? <laughs> <laughs> getting a little tongue tied here. Mm. Sorry, world. Samsung is buying Boxy. The Israeli right. firm that manufactures the Boxy Box, a popular multimedia uh, set-top box that is available around the world. The South Korean electronics giant said it had acquired key talent and assets from the company. Wow. This will help us to improve or continue to improve the overall user experience across our connected devices, it added. Boxy's latest product is like a DVR for the cloud, allowing subscribers to record um, their TV shows onto its servers and then stream them to TVs, computers, and other smart devices. Mm. Cool. That's cool. That is cool. That makes proper sense that you'd use the cloud for that purpose. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like my pogo plug where I, I put all my videos on it mm -hmm. and then I can watch them from my iPod. Pardon me, I can watch them from my Android tablet. I can watch them from my Rico Magic mini PC up on the TV. It's cool. I can watch them on my computer because it, it, the cloud just opens that in, wide in open for you. Cool in that it's cloud. part of the device. Very cool. But unexpected that they'd be bought out by Samsung. So they're, the, what, maybe the world's largest television manufacturer? What and now BoxyBox. It makes me wonder, are they going to keep BoxyBox going? Or are they going to integrate their technologies into I their TVs know. to further create value for their products. Time will only tell what sort of dynasty they will come up with together. Dynasty. That's a Technology cool dynasty. Neat. Dun, dun, dun. Taking over the world. Speaking of world, World of Warcraft maker Blizzard is to start experimenting with a system that lets players use real moolah to buy goods in the game. Hmm. Blizzard revealed an, the experiment in a message posted to the World of Warcraft chat forums before now players have uh, only been able to use or spend real money in out of game stores to buy pets and mounts for their characters the first item players can buy is a potion that boosts the experience points they gain from kills and loot world of warcraft is facing increasing competition from other massively playable online games that remain free to play throughout mm. many of these have already gone down the route that blizzard is contemplating contemplating by letting players use real money to buy gear, boosts, and other equipment for the characters. Speculation is that the new feature will be rolled out first in Asia since that's where the games, most of the, the oh my goodness, 8.3 million players are located. Hmm. Holy doodle. It's a different step. Now I play Planet Calypso in Tropia, in, yes. in Tropia Universe and it's kind of a different approach. They actually have an in-game currency that you can deposit into. So it's like a one-tenth ratio. So if I put in $10, I get $100 in game. Oh, in the game. So hmm. it works out pretty good. But it's kind of a similar premise in that I'm buying with real money things in the game. Mm -hmm. But they're actually, it sounds like they're actually selling within the game. Like you'll sit there with your credit card or maybe you'll have it on your account or something. Yeah. Which opens them up to a whole bunch of, there's a whole new can of worms oh, in there. If they're storing me. things like that, so. We'll have to see what happens next. Interesting. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> They're calling it the talking window. Advertising agency BBDO has come up with a unique way to transmit audio ads to individuals on trains. By making hmm. the window send out a message and talk in their heads. It sounds strange, but the technology being used isn't used. What am I trying to say? <laughs> Who writes it, this stuff? 
it's my mouth it's mm. not working i apologize okay this sounds like a crazy idea but the technology being used to do it isn't new the window has a transmitter attached which makes the window vibrate or when someone leans or sleeps against the window the vibrations play the message so only the person in contact with the window can hear it through hmm. bone conduction interesting now do you Very know much about bone conduction I know about a little bit because okay. of bone conducting hearing aids. That's what I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it sounds like a similar technology to like hearing yeah. aids and things like that. Or if you put your head up against something and you and somebody's talking in another room, you can hear it. It's like, oh, weird, freaky so that weird, makes guys. Sense. Freaky weird. <laughs> so everyone else on the train won't hear a thing because if you're like dozing off against the window, go through your brain. Your bones. Mm. Bone conduction is the same science that makes hearing certain oh makes certain hearing aids and headphones work, as well as being used in the military. The sound waves vibrate the tiny bones in your inner ear, bypassing the eardrum, so you can still hear the ambient sound as well. The ad campaign is currently running on trains in Munich and North Rhine, Westphalia, Germany, um, promoting a new mobile app for Sky Deutschland. Cool, mm. neat idea. And lastly, Honda's popular robot Asimo faced problems with gesture recognition um, on its first day as a museum guide at the Mariakin Science Museum in Tokyo. The machine struggled to differentiate between museum goers raising their hands to ask questions um, and raising their hands to take photos. Oh. Uh, it's got all messed up. It is working as a tour guide at the museum for the next four weeks as a trial. Asimo cannot respond yet to voice commands. The robot is instead designed to answer 100 questions selected via touchscreen from a written panel. But during a demonstration, it froze and asked, who wants to ask Asimo a question? Who wants to ask Asimo a question? <laughs> who wants to ask Asimo a question? Repeatedly, Ransom. when people pointed Ransom. their cameras at it. Oh Freaked them out. Honda Robotics Technology Specialist Satoshi Shigimi said, Right now, it can recognize a child waving to it, but it's not able to comprehend the meaning of the wave. <laughs> you can get these full stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Rory W. Nash with contributions from Stephen Dulaney and our amazing community of viewers. If you have a story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. From the newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. One of the stories came to us from our very own Heather Bailey Brown as well. Thank you for sending that in. Um, and I want to know how th this guy can't understand things, but he can feel emotion. So much so that he loves us. Oh, that's sign language, guys. Sign language, folks. Hey, tonight's show is brought to you in part by AdZerk. They are the next generation of ad serving. If you've got a website, make sure you check them out. Uh, you can monetize your website by placing banner ads and things like that. AdZerk can help. They are the fastest asynchronous banner ad code in the world. AdZerk.com. We've got somebody on the cat phone here. Thanks for calling us up. Cat phone. Hello. Hello. Well, hello. Who's this? This is Jim uh, Carter Slade. Hi, Jim. You're live on the air with Category 5. What can we do for you? Well, I was wondering, I just sent you a couple of emails. I sent you the link in the second one. It's for KDUXP. It's Ubuntu 1204.2 LTS. It's in Portuguese. And it has the, uh, converted it to English. Yeah. And, and uh, it's got the classic menu. Okay. And uh, once you uh, install it uh, and you set it up, it, you know, you have to have it installed. Then once you uh, set it up and then it starts again, and then it gives you the English language. Oh, so you actually can get it in in English as well. So is this a new distribution that you're showing us here? Uh, well, it's uh, the uh, the twelve oh four is a fairly new one. Yeah. And I like I like it because it has the classic menu. Cool. Uh, but, K D U. But you, up, you know, you just follow the flag. You know, like it has the English. You go to the uh, control panel where it has the. Uh, the yeah. Peg that shows you the languages. Yeah. And you set it up. I'm, I'm trying to make a YouTube video on it. Okay. And I had a question for you about how do I get an intro? I, I downloaded one of those uh, free ones where you, uh, it's from Flexpress, and they send an MP4 to your box. Yeah. I'm wondering how you put that in with your video that you made. Like to actually uh, meld the two videos together? Yeah, but it's an MP4. My other one says in it with an org. Uh, org file you know like, oh like an og og yeah, or ogv i'm wondering how do you inter, you know intertwine like a, a 
sound yeah. like a music when MP4, isn't it? Or is that a video? No, that MP4 is a video codec or a video container for uh, MPEG video. So what you would do, Jim, is uh, you need to use a piece of software such as um, now you could use FFmpeg, which is kind of deprecated. You can use M Encoder to um, put the videos together. I actually, do you have Windows machines or Linux machines? You all Linux? Linux? I'm switching over because XP space and I don't have a lot of work and I can't afford to buy a new computer. Right. For uh, Windows 8 and that. So you might try using something, you know, easy. Do you, you want to get into some video editing or just convert the videos that you're creating? Because you might try um, OpenShot Video Editor, which is a free piece of software for Linux that is a nonlinear video editor. And you can place each of those clips within your timeline and then export the whole video, including all the clips. And that's a Linux piece of software. So that's something. Yeah. Um, and I'll put links in the show notes for episode number 303 for you, Jim. Yeah, because I, I've been trying to just, uh, I, you know, I want to have a fancy intro like you guys do, but uh, sure. I, you know, I haven't got the money to do it. But sure. I've never done it before. Yeah, give that a go. I think OpenShot is a really good starting place. And actually, Krista and I uh, did a feature on it a little while ago, and you'll find it at uh, linuxtechshow.com. And uh-huh. that feature shows you some of the ways to create title graphics and things, so you can create um, like a show intro and, and all that kind of stuff. might be a really good place to start. And I was just looking at KD, KDU here, Jim, and they actually have a translation at the left-hand side. Um, so this is our, our viewer, Jim, on the line, and, and he's recommending that we check this out because the interface is, is very much like a classic Linux. And you can see on the left-hand side, they've got a Google Translate that lets me convert everything to uh, English. What, what language is the distro in by default? When you, it's in Portuguese. Portuguese, and it's not on the Linux distribution page, neither. It's not listed. I see, because they're not distributing an English distributable or something. Uh, right. But if you go into the actual program, you know, and you yep. follow, like, just by the sign language, like the flag and that, yep. and then you, dra- you drag the English up to the top, and then, you know, ask for amend as a password. That's the mm-hmm. password you use. Very yeah. good. It looks very much like the, the distro that I was just looking at, except uh, a little classier, a little yeah, bit. it's really... And all the, you know, the one show you had where you, uh, the registry edit uh, part, like you said, was like Windows that you downloaded. Yep. That comes in with the package that comes already installed. Oh, okay. Yeah, very good. So you don't have to install anything. Yeah, I see virtu- they're, they're running virtual box. Manager, package manager open, but didn't work. So I had to go into terminal and type in, you know, I went online and it gave me the terminal to type in to get it to work. Yep. Very cool. Well, thanks for the tip. Uh, we'll have to check that out. And viewers, uh, if you give a, a look at KDU, uh, make sure you uh, you let us know so that we can let Jim know. Yeah, the second, the second one you see, not the beta, but the second one you see down there in the red. Uh, the uh, RV4? Yeah, and that'll take you to uh, SourceForge, that link. Okay, very good. I'll post a link to this in the show notes for episode number uh, 303. In the meantime, it is Linux KDU XP. Dot com. I presume that uh, is it's basically designed, as I'm saying with uh, Linspire, kind of kind of uh, an easy transition for somebody who's using Windows XP. As you say, Jim, XP is at the end of life. Uh, if you're running Windows XP, it's gone as of April. So um, you yeah, really this, this you, is precise. So it should be good for four more years. Right. So, so you need to find an alternative. Why not? Here's the thing, Jim, is that you can get your old hardware working great with this. Because uh, Linux will bring your computer back to life, and it works on Centron too. You know, like a lot cool. of them. That, you know, the Centron uh, gateway ones. Yeah. So. Knows uh, and it works with my old Dell too. Good to give it a try. Is it? Is it? A, and it's a live CD, I presume. Yeah, it's a live. So you can actually try it before you even yeah. uh, install the only it. Problem is, live it won't be in English. You'll have to convert it. Right. Okay. So if you can find your way around Portuguese, okay. which isn't that difficult, I think Portuguese is one of the easier languages to follow. Uh, as an English-speaking person, it's not too hard to figure out your way around, especially if you've ever used Linux before. Uh, are you, You're going to put together a video, Jim. When you finish that video, uh, can you send it our way, and we'll post it up for you, and uh, that will help our viewers to... Uh, oh, we've, we've lost Jim, but I know Jim is still watching the show. Uh, send us a copy of that video, Jim, and uh, we'll be happy to post that to our channels so that uh, viewers who are interested in checking that out will learn how to switch that to English. Thank you very much for the call. Cool. Cat phone saves the day. 
So Indeed. much easier to talk on the phone than to, to type all those particulars. <laughs> Seriously. We don't have to wait for your responses. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thanks for the call, time. Jim. Mm-hmm, we appreciate it. And do we have uh, email questions that have come in or we any questions do. in the chat room over we the past little bit? We have a couple bit? questions all right. in the email inbox. Sure. This one's from a couple weeks ago. Do you want to tackle it? Sure, yeah. Okay, this comes to us from Kevo. Hey, Kevo. And I guess before he, I'll just read what he says. Okay. It's kind of a follow-up question, I think, to something else. I managed to get uh, Point Linux to work almost perfectly thanks to your tutorial features. Great. However, whenever I'm using it to watch watch video, the monitor goes dim at regular intervals, despite oh setting power settings as per attached screenshot. Oh, he attached some screenshots oh, great. for us. I so can't that wait to see. is right. helpful. Very, very helpful. Um, even the TV connected <clears throat> via HDMI goes dim. I use it in AC mode. Another issue I get is when I connect the system to my TV via HDMI, I get audio from the TV as well as the machine, the laptop. Right, right, right. Speakers in twin view mode using NVIDIA configuration utility. If I leave in absolute mode, it seems to work properly. He sent another screenshot okay. to explain try to bring these up. that. Okay, there's one screenshot. So you can see that, uh, okay, we've got the twin view working. The TV's connected, looking good. And then we've this got, one. okay, this is the first thing I would have had you look at. Your, uh, D, your, uh, your power management. So on AC power, never turn off the uh, computer, never go to sleep. But here's the thing, under display, put display to sleep when inactive for never, and set display brightness to 100%. So, And dim display when idle is unchecked. So that all seems like that should do what you're trying to do, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. There's more to the email, I presume? So, Yes. This is not a deal breaker for me because the Point Linux is very fast compared to Zorin or Linux Mint that I was using before you reviewed Point Linux. But the dimming thing is annoying when watching a long video. Okay. Thanks for the great work that you do. Kevo, I'm happy to uh, do my best to help you out here. Um, I I really am enjoying Point Linux. Uh, This is, we were looking at a couple of different distros today. This is Point Linux. This is what I'm running on my system now. And it is beautiful. It's modern. It's sleek. It does everything that you need it to do. Hmm. But as you say, it's going to dim your monitor. You've got it plugged into your HDMI port. So guess what happens when you're watching a movie? The television dims as if it's going to screensaver. But you've checked everything off. And so why is it doing this? Because you've set it up properly, as I saw in the screenshots there and our viewers at home saw. But if you do stuff like this, does that happen? Do you have things like Expo? Do you have things like Cube? Or do you have things like if I close a window, we're going to woo Hillary here. I know, I'm like, There's my terminal. And if I close it. Fire. Fire. That's cool. That is cool. Mm-hmm. But what is that? That's comp is fusion. Oh. So there's a little something that you need to learn about your system now because it is Point Linux. It's Debian 7, but it looks like what? GNOME 2. But GNOME 2 is gone. It's deprecated. It's been replaced by GNOME 3. So what are we actually running? We're running Mate, the Mate desktop environment, which is based on GNOME 2 point something. Okay, so what's different here is basically we used to go gconf editor, right? But guess what? We've got mate conf dash editor. Okay, it's the same thing as gconf editor. Remember that? It's kind of like the registry for Linux. But because we're running mate, we need to use this one. So what I want to do is I want to go apps and then go to compiz. Under comp is, you should see plugins. Go there and see fade somewhere around here. There it is. And go to your screen, go to options, and you'll see something here. Dim unresponsive is checked by default. And you're not going to find a setting for that necessarily in Compass Config Settings Manager. So disable that. Just like that, just an uncheck, and it's done. So now that's not going to happen to you anymore. Uh, on Ubuntu, there's a couple of cool to- tools. Um, uh, for example, caffeine is is a pretty good one, but it's not going to work because uh, it's not compatible with PC uh, with uh, with our our Point Linux. The other thing that we might try, uh, or other thing I would say I would suggest, is go into a root terminal, and from within that terminal, see we're a root user now. 
there's a couple of commands that we're going to enter, and these are using the uh, xset command, which is uh, the user configuration utility for x. So I'm going to go, go xset, and you know what I'm actually going to do is uh, bring up a, a forum post here. Uh, let's see. Uh, cat5.tv slash no ss for no screen no screen saver. Okay? cat5.tv slash no ss is going to take you to crunchbang.org. It's a Linux distro with a helpful community. There are the commands that I want to use. So we're going to use xset to disable the DPMS. Uh, that's the, the power management subsystem. Uh, we want to use xset to set your screen saver to use no blank, which means it's not going to go blank, and then set your screen saver uh, to power uh, to off so that your, sc your screen saver is actually disabled. So I can copy that whole command. I think it's a good thing to, to do as well. Paste that into my terminal, or just type them. That's fine too. And remember, this is a root terminal. Done, done, done. Okay. So what that's now done is it's set my system to not use those things. Screensaver, mm -hmm. basically. That's a one-time thing. If you want it to happen after a reboot, um, you're going to need to set that up in a script and have it auto start. The setting that we changed in comp is that's the one that you're looking for, and that is going to be persistent. So if you reboot your computer, it will still be set. Okay. So I hope that helps. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much for the question. Uh -huh. What else have you got for me? Well, I was just reading this one, okay. and I laughed to myself at oh, the end. Did? So I will read it to you all. all. Right. Hi, Robbie and gang. This comes to us from Carl uh, Cunningham. Hey, Carl. Thanks for answering my question about syncing a keep, uh, keep pass X database across yeah. four computers. Your suggestion of Ubuntu One is exactly what I was looking for. Nice. I set it, and it seems to work pretty well. When I create a file on one machine, it appears um, on all the others that are synced. That's pretty neat. I'm going to run it for a while, um, syncing a test folder to see how it goes. Okay. I did have an issue where it missed syncing a couple of files. It was when I was testing by creating and removing files. I don't know why, but after I deleted and recreated files on one machine, they were again synced on it the others. Okay, so, very cool. Something to consider is that if you delete a file from any of the synced machines, it almost instantly disappears from all the others. It seemed a bit scary until I read that Ubuntu One just moves it to the trash. Hmm. Oh. Thank you very much for the follow-up there, uh, and uh, we certainly are happy mm. that that suggestion is going to work out for you. Very and good. he just has a little comment here for mm. Eric. Okay. Um, it seems you may not be familiar with the word kluge that I it's used true. in my last email. It's true. Or maybe you don't. You do know it, and my lousy spelling threw you do off. Do you know the word? Nay, I do not. We we don't know it here, so this <laughs> is going to be a learning experience for all of us. Said he um, included a dif dictionary definition for us okay. to expand our vocabulary. Thank you. I thought there was a question in there. I just skipped to the part about Eric. If I see something about Eric, I want to read it because it could be good <laughs> or bad. So that was just a comment, but we appreciate your emails all the same. Oh, so it's a it's a link to they, the word. It's a so definition. It's pronounced like kludgy. Pronounced kludgy. Is that right? Okay, let's bring up this but definition. But clud, clud, kludgy. Kludgy. Okay. It's very tricky. Miriam dash Webster dot com. I'm looking at your screen. Dictionary slash. It looks like kludge. It looks like kludge to me, but it's kludgy. Uh, hmm. Oh, it shows on Merriam-Webster that it, it's... It's a noun. Oh, I, it sounded like an adjective to me. Kludgy. Kludgy is what it oh, says. And it says, origin unknown, first use, 1962. And it means a system, and especially a computer system, made up of poorly matched components. Kludgy. We need to add that to our vocabulary. Thank you very much. Isn't you that think interesting? You use it as a noun and an adjective. Y you would think that uh, that, hmm. that would be something you'd find in like uh, like a not Merriam-Webster. Like it's like it sounds like something like that would be like slang or something. Slang, not yeah. a but no, this is this is legit. This is the real. Well, I'm pretty deal. sure Google's in the dictionary now as a verb yeah. and noun. That seems off. So there you have it. <laughs> there Strangely, you Bing is not. Have it. All right. We've got a couple more minutes. So sure. Here's a time. little something something All from right. Peter Lewis. Hey, Peter. It's a question, but it doesn't require help. It requires a yes or no answer. Oh. Did you know about Star Trek, a parody on Star Trek? 
yeah. Star Rec Studios uh, Limited, and Rec and Movie were created by a group of filmmakers from Finland who in 2005 created the freely downloadable Star Trek parody <laughs> movie, Star Rec. That's another thing that uh, that takes me back. Yeah, that was a while ago. Um, I watched The Perkinning. I don't know In The Perkinning. Is. Star Rec. <laughs> Uh, yeah, these these Finnish uh, movie producers, like just amateur people, but really, really good at the special effects and stuff, put this thing together. Uh, I think it was starrec.com, like that. And it's literally just a, it's like a parody Ooh. movie, but they are great with the special effects and stuff. It's amazing. I've never heard of such a You've thing. You've never heard of such a There's There are so many fan movies and things out there. But it it is in Finnish, I guess. But I remember watching it back when it first came out just because every Trekkie has to you watch have to. the well-done fan fiction stuff, right? Of course. So I didn't realize that they were making more and, and doing more than that. What was the... Wreckamovie.com. Wreckamovie.com. There you have it. So they are doing more now. More. Can't wait till they do a Twilight one. (laughs) What's with zombies, guys? That's what I'd like to know. Stare. I just saw a zombie at the corner of my eye. What's the deal with zombies? Not a zombie, the word oh. zombie. I didn't see a zombie. I saw the word. I was like, where? Zombie. In the studio here? No, there's five? no zombies That's in really here. That's really creepy. Yeah, what's with that? What's I'd like to know what's, what's with that. What's with too. zombies? Yeah. That's what I'd what's like What's with the, to the uh, vampires trend? I don't know. The whole, I mean, I'm not a teenage girl, so I don't well, neither quite am I, understand. I, but I'm still into it. Yeah. You are? I mean, I've read the books and seen all the movies, really? but. I have to to stay current with the trends. <laughs> so that you can carry conversations culture. with teenage girls. I do. In my line of work, you have to know what's I, going on in the I world. watched the spoof trailers on YouTube. <laughs> they were brilliant. <laughs> really, really good. Spoof Aww. trailers are fun. Because you get into, you know, they'll do Star Trek and like the, the Star Trek 2009 movie where, where in the trailer, it's like, it's a movie where the aliens are not the aliens that you remember from Star Trek. Mm. And it shows all the clips where it's the guys in the bar and stuff, and they are they look more like Star Wars <laughs> aliens. There's no Klingons. There's no anything until the new movie. But, yeah, those are fun. Hmm. We're, we're practically out of time. I suppose we have oh, time for a really that. quick question if there is one. Let me take a look, see. All right. This is unquestioned. Thanks for the email, by the way. But another oh, okay. email. We got lots of comments and stuff, which is cool because we yeah, love we hearing do. from people. We do love So to questions hear from or comments, stories, sagas, <laughs> novellas, whatever. We'll read it. The whole chat room is tired of the zombie thing, by the way. Okay. Especially I'm not Agamotto. alone. Agamotto is sick of zombies and auto tune. Auto tune. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. could have a whole show. What if they auto tuned zombies? Oh. That's Heather's suggestion. Maybe we could actually take like a zombie movie and auto tune it. We could like get the guys from Auto Tune the News to do it for us. We should, yeah. Gregory Brothers. We should just do like a bunch of things. We got a lot of things we could. A lot of stuff on the back burner for season eight, folks. Ooh, possibilities (laughs) are just like thinking. Um, Anyways, one of those emails we've got is a quick shout out to um, Robert Gazinski's sister oh yes her birthday is on july oh, 13th so happy, happy birthday. birthday natalie hope you have a terrific day from everyone here at category five and from your brother and the entire world the whole world is wishing happy you a happy birthday. birthday tonight natalie so hope it's a good one mm-hmm. she joins the july club yeah of the birthday it's a busy month mm-hmm. yeah well, that is all the time that we have, folks. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we are online at www.category5.tv. Make sure you follow us on Twitter as well. Uh, I'm at Robbie Ferguson. I'm at Hillary Rumble, I'm pretty sure. That's right. I think that is me. With the double L's. Double L, Hillary, double L, Rumble. Like yeah, the way I remember it is Rum Ball. It is what it is. I should look into my hair. And you actually incidentally brought me a rum ball as a gift once. I did. And I will never forget that. (laughs) A rum ball from Rumble. (laughs) 
Thanks for being here, folks. And uh, please pop us an email this week, live at category5.tv. Next week, Abigail Page is going to be here in the studio. A married woman, no longer Abigail Smith. She will be here uh, joining me at Category 5. We've got lots of fun stuff planned for you. And uh, this month is just going to be an exciting, exciting month. Um, So make sure you check our calendar. Keep up to date with our website, category5.tv. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for being here. It's been a slice. And we'll see you next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Bye, Have a great week. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. 